Hey everybody, Roxabox90 here with another top 10 EDH Commander card countdown, and today we actually have 10 specific Commander 2014 cards to go down. We're going to break them all down with the same criteria we usually do, and we're going to have cards that are, in terms of use, they're multiplayer oriented, cards that are more specific at the bottom end of the list, getting to ones that are more universal in use, and kinds of decks they can fit in as well as the colors they can fit in. So a lot of people asked me to do an honorable mentions list of the reprint cards. I'm just going to list them here so you guys can see which ones I'm most excited about. I will point out that Worm Coil Engine is a huge, huge reprint. The Karoo Lands are really cool to see brought back. Skull Clamp is amazing. The Medallions are amazing. Chaos Warp, Goblin Welder, Drana is my general, so I love seeing her, and hopefully more mono black players will take advantage of her. And uh, Cyclonic Rift, oh, these cards are super powerful, super awesome, and I'm amazed they're being brought back all together in one Commander 2014 set. So if you guys have from this list particularly ones you like, that's awesome. I'd love to hear about it a little bit more down below in the comments section. In terms of the honorable mentions for the top 10 which is going to be commander 2014 new cards and we're going to start off with come up in which is a hilariously awesome card i love these kind of unique combat tricks this one seems very powerful and very splashable titania protector of argoth she's interesting very very niche build around then we have lifeblood hydra this card is super cool for a hydra because it does what green needs to do when it dies which is that draws cards equal to its power and it's a huge scalable creature song of dryads is one of the few straight up beast within style removal and it's an enchant creature in malicious affliction this card is a two for one but spot removal in commander especially multiplayer commander isn't necessarily super awesome which is kind of why we need to have that more bit i think this card will be more useful in other formats even than in commander ghoul caller giza and her brother stitcher are Jerolf, are both really interesting cards but they're very very narrow in use chromatic selen selection Decent, fine, Wrath, and I like that you get something back from it, even though it's very expensive. Ob Nixlas, the Black Oath, the only Planeswalker in the Honorable Mentions, I think that yes, he does what Mono Black wants to do, but his abilities are really, really lackluster, in my opinion, for a commander, and even as one of the 99. I think he's honestly better as one of the 99, and even then, he's not as powerful as others. Assault Suit, this card is so, so cool. I mean, come on, I don't know how many decks are really going to seriously work with it, but man it's great for equipment decks and it's very very cool in general siege behemoth this card is huge i love that it gives it gives your creatures this this amazing amazing ability that they can basically punch through for the win yes its body's a little lackluster but still it's kind of a fun card wake the dead this card is a combat trick which often in multiplayer edh i mean yeah it's the best of its kind probably in terms of bringing creatures back to block and then you lose them but it's the whole idea is that they're worth their while for me it's a pretty narrow card in use even though it's very well designed reform this card is hilarious it's awesome it's cool how useful is it i don't know we'll have to see especially if it gets exiled then you lose the whole trail effect but for casual for fun for flavor it's super cool deploy the front this card people point out to me is better than it looks and i agree the fact you get x number of creatures in total make the seven cost a little bit more reasonable angel of the dire hour this card is just seems like fun uh, yeah it's easily countered it doesn't really protect itself and the enter the battlefield effect is it's going to be abusable but it does cost seven mana which means Means that as uh, as wraths go it's one of the more narrow wraths bitter few this card is so well designed i mean i don't know how well it's going to be used but in terms of design pitting two players against each other very very fun i like that thunderfoot baloth and in fact all the lieutenant cards are very very well designed thunderfoot baloth i think does the most overall storm search kraken is probably in and of itself very very useful Demon of Willing Agonies is a huge swinging card. Tyrant's Familiar, I absolutely love the design on that card. All of the Lieutenant cards are all really cool. The Angel one's probably the weakest and the least interesting in my mind, but they're all well designed. So those are our honorable mentions. Let's get to the top 10 list itself. Starting off with Jazal Goldmane. This guy is huge for any sort of deck that wants to run aggressive cards. He's a fantastic builder on Commander in terms of catch rival, in terms of weenie, white weenie builds, in terms of equipment builds. He does it all. 
and I love the fact that he's able to multiple times give your attacking creatures the X plus X. This is humongous for token strategies. It's great, great card. He's a fantastic Voltron card with his first strike and his and his stats are fantastic. He's very, very well built around. The reason he's low end on the list is that he's very narrow in a sense in that he's he works for certain kinds of builds. You wouldn't necessarily throw him into any deck, especially in a multiplayer design. But if you build around him, he's utterly amazing. Nine, we have Felden of the Third Path. I really like Felden. I like the ability in terms of its versatility more than Jazal personally. And I like that it does something which is a kiki-jiki effect, very, very strong over the course of the game as utility, but takes it from a graveyard. This is super, super fun. The fact that it's an artifact works well into artifact builds as well, but he also doesn't have to be limited to that. I really think the design, the flavor, the overall thing works really together. Number eight, we have Freyellis, Line of Wars Fury. She is lower on the list than some other Planeswalkers, but she's an old, old Planeswalker, one of the ancient Planeswalkers who were super, super powerful. I loved her in the storyline. She was one of the most interesting female characters in Magic's history. And as a card, she doesn't disappoint. The art is amazing. The flavor really fits her natural element. And yes, it's very, very flexible. It fits into lots of decks. The abilities are not particularly crazy by any means for a Planeswalker. Her minus six is what we want from green, but it's narrowed to green. And because she can fit in a lot of decks, but she leans more towards mono green and her ability is not particularly insane, they're more just consistent utility, and I like that versatility, despite the fact it's not a powerhouse explosive card. Then we have the Offerings at number seven. Volcanic Offering is my personal favorite, but all of them are very well designed, very, very flexible cards that I think should see a good amount of play across the board. I like how they interact in multiplayer. Remember, this list is focusing a bit on multiplayer. They are designed to take advantage of the multiplayer field, and for me, I really, really like how they have multiple effects for a well for a reasonable cost that also works very well with manipulating the table. Then we have number six, which is Doretti and Nahiri. And the reason I put them side by side is because I think they're both brilliantly designed cards with great, great artwork, great, great abilities. However, they are designed for certain style decks. They're narrower, even though the abilities are so powerful. Nahiri is obviously designed for equipment-based builds. If you put her in a deck that's not equipment-based, yeah, she might do a little bit of work, but she's not nearly as awesome or as interesting. Daredi is kind of the same way. Yes, he's one of the strongest Red Planeswalkers for Commander ever, if not the strongest, but you need to have a good amount of artifacts, which only Mono Red would take advantage of. Even though his three and a red is very splashable and he might go into other builds as well, his Mono Red is very, very narrow and Mono Red heavy artifact even more so. So both of them are very well designed. Their abilities are utterly fantastic. Both are fantastically designed cards. We have number five, Teferi, Temporal Archmage. He is awesome. He's awesome. Yes, his plus one is not super powerful by any means. His minus one is insane. And his minus 10 is insane. Really, really is. He he works so, so well with any sort of super friends deck, which are becoming more and more popular the more planeswalkers they print. He's incredibly powerful for everything. And the fact that he starts at such a high loyalty with the ability to filter the top cards of your deck, he, he does everything. All his abilities are super powerful and he fits into just about any deck running blue, which gives him a versatility the other Planeswalkers I don't think have to the same extent. Number four, Masterwork of Ingenuity. This card is basically Swords number two in your deck or any equipment number two in your deck and i love it. it's so cheap it's so easy to search for trinket mage can search for it and grab it up out of your deck it's pretty much what you need for an equipment deck but even decks that don't run specific equipment they just have some want to run this card and given how many decks run swords and the like this card is going to see a lot a lot of play dual caster mage now come on number three this guy you got to give it up for him the art is fantastic actually is it a lady i always wondered people have been saying they think it's a lady i i can see it i can see it being a lady but dual caster mage is ridiculous not snapcaster yes we understand but the fact that it's able to copy any instant or sorcery as a flashing creature the other effects out there that do this for the similar costs are not as good in the fact that they can't be flickered in and out of play. They, they can't be uh, manipulated to the they can't be manipulated to the extent that dual caster mage can be. Splashed into other formats, I'm sure, but in commander, I still think he's very very well designed. Number two, containment priest. Yes, she is amazing for a number of number of formats. A number of reasons why she's 
incredibly versatile at one and one white. She can go into just about any deck, she's a human, and the fact that she locks down so many important strategies in Commander, yeah, it's not necessarily nice, but in multiplayer, she can literally turn the entire game into being about her. She's so powerful, she's so flexible, she's so useful as utility. Yes, she's acting as a hate card, but almost every deck have hate direction. You have graveyard re removal, you have flicker removal, uh, or ways to prevent it. Almost every deck has ways to combat other strategies, and she takes out so many strategies commander multiplayer decks like to use. And number one... Arcane Lighthouse. Yes, the artwork is absolutely gorgeous. I kind of wish they had a foil. But the reason I like this card is that doesn't it play tapped? and that it can right away shut down Hexproof and Shroud. And this is really important because in Multiplayer Commander, this is even more important, there are so many cards that give Shroud across the board or give Hexproof across the board. So many Voltron Commanders rely on this being a huge protection for them. And this card is so easy to use as a utility. You just drop it into your deck and you can take down without having to risk having a dead card in hand, so to speak, by com it coming into play tapped. This card comes into play untapped. It gives you versatility. It gives you a way to really deal with some of the most powerful and frustrating effects that you can face in a commander game. And for that, I have to say, it's a near universal card inclusion or have the has the possibility of being inclusion. And I think it's very well designed. So those are my top 10 EDH Commander 2014 cards and I hope you guys enjoyed. I'd love to hear your guys thoughts down below in the comment section. If you enjoy the video, tap the like button. If you're new to the channel, then please check in and subscribe as I will have more of these coming to you really soon. You can also check out my other playlists that involve Commander. They should be right here for easy clicking. And as always guys, Roxbox90 signing out. I'll see you guys next time.